Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you're here. Today we are going to get a question from Andrew in New York. And Andrew writes to me, he says, Hi Paul, I came across the term Type G amplifier in one of the trade magazines. And I hope my question isn't too basic, but I've never heard of a Type G amp. And when I look it up, I found it's a bit confusing. <laughs> Yeah. Could you explain how they work? And by the way, I recently became an empty nester and your videos have helped me through some pretty sad days. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's, I remember when our kids left and went to school, it was like uh, just such a change. It, you know, when you're first married, and you have your life and then all of a sudden kids show up, it's chaos, right? <clears throat> you never get any sleep, there's noise, and we had four boys. So it was a madhouse for 20 years, right? And then they all leave. And then it's quiet again. And it takes a lot of getting used to, that's hard. But I'm glad my, my voice, my something or other has helped you through that period. That's great. I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, class G. Well, we know there are a number of classes of amplifiers. Class A, Class AB, Class uh, C, actually, Class, um, uh, what else, D. So we class amplifiers according to how they work. And we know that a class A, class AB amplifiers, those are our standard high power supply, have a amplification system that goes between the power supply. The difference between a class A and a class AB is how much current is being drawn on a continuous basis and how much heat is produced. Class D, as we know, is pulse width modulation to where we put an audio signal in and out at say 100,000 times a second comes a pulse. And if the level of our musical signal is very low, it'll put out every, every one 100,000th of a second, it'll put out a tiny little pulse. If it's loud, it'll put out a wide pulse. And as these pulses grow in width, and then get demodulated, that makes the, represents the signal coming out, right? All right, so a class G amplifier is a class AB, or well, we could call it even a class A, but let's call it a class AB, because I think that's easier to understand. It's a standard amplifier that's analog, right? Analog signal in, get a bigger analog signal out. And gain of say 30. All right, let's just pick that. So one volt in, 30 volts out. And 30 volts out is quite a large signal. So you're making some pretty loud sounds. Two volts in is the maximum that amplifier can put out. Does that make sense? So one volt's about half, uh, et cetera. Most of our music is coming in at a very low voltage, say 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts are coming in. And 30 times that is coming out. Okay, in a traditional Class AB amplifier, our voltage rails, the power supply, sit at a constant level. Let's say plus 70 volts and minus uh, uh, 70 volts. So if you were to measure between the negative rail and the positive rail, you'd have 140 volts. And our little amplifier sits between this 140 volts, and as our little signal comes in, then that bigger signal, but it's still small, is going between this 140 volts, right? The highest it can go is at the top of the 70 volts and the bottom of the 70. Well, that creates a lot of heat. The fact that this amplifier in the middle has such a distance as it's putting out power between the top rail and the bottom rail and the signal. So what if you were to squish those rails down so they're just a little bit bigger than the signal. Now you're talking about a class G amplifier, okay? So 
We start with rails that instead of 140 volts apart, maybe they are 20 volts apart. And the little signal on here is wiggling between that 20 volts. To the speaker, it doesn't know any different, right? It's got power, you have the, the appropriate size wiggle coming out, watts are being made, sound is coming out. Now, a bigger signal comes in, what happens? Well, if we didn't raise the, the 20 volt level, we'd clip. But we have a smart circuit that says, aha, here comes a bigger signal. And we go, whoop, and we raise the size of the power supply. And we do it in steps, in stages. So that the biggest part could be that full 140 volts. Maybe the next one down comes to 100 volts. Maybe the next one down is 50 volts, 60, 20. And boom, 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 boom and it changes the power supply rails in accordance with the signal coming in, and therefore it is much more efficient because there's not the big gap to create the heat. Okay, that's your Class G. Hope that helped. Thanks.